Mike. Thanks for coming on VCR party. Hi, Mike. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. I'm super excited to be here. It's October. It's my favorite month of the year. I'm sorry to say I just recently discovered your channel, but it's incredible. It's the Horror Geek on, on YouTube every Wednesday night. Uh, you've got new content, thoroughly researched stuff I've never come close to hearing of. So nice work on the channel. Well, here's the, here's the thing, Mike, is like with, with Nick and I, if, you know, we do found footage and we mm -hmm. like collect VHS. And we have a big collection. Everybody assumes that we know horror, right. you know, because that's the big VHS draw. <laughs> yeah. We don't. We don't know it at all. Oh. We, don't, we really don't know it that much. It's, uh, it's Nick amazing knows a little you bit guys... more than me. Yeah. It's, it's amazing you guys do VHS and don't know horror because that's like that's what feels like keeps VHS alive at this point. So well, we're trying yeah. to remedy that blind spot by having yeah. experts like you on the show to show us oh. some stuff. But what, what's going on uh, with the channel uh, nowadays? Uh, the channel's doing really well. Uh, the pandemic, obviously, last year was super helpful because everybody was in the house and it was like living through a horror movie. So you like were like, I'll just watch this guy tell stupid dad jokes about movies I've never heard of because it makes me forget about, you know, the world falling apart around me. Uh, this year has been still good, not as good as last year, but, you know, it's October, so... Uh... It's horror movie season, so everything picks up a little bit now. Absolutely. So you're, you're just like October, you got to just be constantly just like yes. horror nonstop <laughs> talking about it. And but do you don't do you get tired of it or uh, um, do, you, no. do you need a break? Are you desensitized <laughs> to everything? Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You know what I need a break from right now? Halloween Kills talk, basically, because the oh, Halloween yeah. Kills came out the other day and like the internet went nuts and everybody's got an opinion on it. And I certainly had an opin opinion on it as well, but uh, I'm already tired of hearing about it. So. You'll get zero Halloween Kills questions yes. here tonight. Fantastic. Yes. <laughs> you're, in, you're in a safe space here, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> People come to me all the time and they want to know like, well, what do you think about this new movie? And it's like, have you seen my show? I'm watching stuff from like 40 years ago. <laughs> like <laughs> YouTube doesn't let me do anything new because they want to copyright claim me on everything. So I have to oh. dig up these things from Italy and, you know, Germany and all these weird places because nobody nobody wants to sue me over those. So <laughs> Exactly. Well, exactly. and you dug up three obscure ones that, I mean, I know, I don't know much about horror, to be honest, but these were ones mm -hmm. that I feel like even most horror fans haven't heard of or maybe just <laughs> only tangentially know. So what, what are we going to see here? All right, so tonight uh, I kind of went with a theme for my my big appearance here that I was super excited about. I wanted to do, uh, you know, everybody on Halloween watches the same 10 scary movies. Like every year there's a bunch of lists and they're all like, oh, watch Halloween and watch Nightmare on Elm Street and watch Trick or Treat. And, you know, it's basically the same stuff. And uh, I went with the assumption that you're probably tired of seeing the same old things every year. So I decided that I would bring you three movies that are Italian ripoffs of better movies that uh, are terrible and entertaining, but will be like watching your favorite horror movies without actually watching your favorite horror movies. Oh, I'm excited about <laughs> this. <laughs> now you're talking my language here. Yes. <laughs> this is horror I can get behind. Yes. Italian knockoffs of more successful horror yeah. movies uh, there's a uh, there's a bunch of these like we could we could do weeks of of shows on <laughs> oh, this man. topic because italy italy never met a successful american movie in the 80s that they would not rip <laughs> off and yet they would rip them off but they would make them unique at the same time so they would totally okay. go in their own direction so oh my wife is italian so i can't wait to tell her about this fun fact about italians yes what yeah. do we need to know about night killer all right, so Night Killer is our first film. It's a uh, 19, uh, early 1990s horror film that was uh, marketed in Italy as Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, even though there are no chainsaws in it and it has nothing to do with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and instead is about a killer who looks like a bargain basement Freddy Krueger. Uh, <laughs> he has a terrible mask, and if you ever thought like, man, I really wanna see a cheap Freddy Krueger knockoff where Freddy Krueger is thirsty and super horny, this is the movie for you. Thirsty uh, was, and super horny. Super horny, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, it was it was directed by Claudio Fragasso, who, uh, if you remember that name, you will probably know him best as the guy who made the classic Troll Two. Oh, of oh. course, yeah, that's one we do know. All right. Yes. 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 Well, let's watch some clips. If you want us to pause it, just let us know here. All right. All right. So we open with Night Killer, which is uh, interesting because there are no kills in the, that are actually at night in this movie, save for one. <laughs> <laughs> this that would be thing, a good t-shirt. I was here. just going to say that graphic needs to be on a t-shirt. Right. <laughs> and here's our first look at Freddy. You can kind of see there. like the crust of the... 
Yeah. Th- this I, is. I, wow. Yeah. I, I like to call this like if you ordered a Freddy mask off wish.com. This is this is basically what you'd get. Yeah. Uh, so, like, if you were importing from overseas a Freddy mask for your Halloween party, this is basically. Or, what or, or like it got left out in the sun for too long. Or yes, or if you yeah, left yeah. it out in the sun for a week a and like car. it rained. Yeah. Right. Yes. right. So I, I was under the assumption because I I scrubbed through these. I didn't watch them all uh, when you sent them, but uh-huh. I was under the assumption that he was supposed to be wearing a mask. But no, this is supposed to be an actual disfigured person. This That's like, what you think. Yeah. But he's actually a guy wearing a mask. Got it. Okay. okay. So, so the interesting backstory here is that Fergasso used to work with a guy, another director who makes ripoff movies who we're going to see very soon named Bruno Mattei. And, uh, and so basically Fergasso thought he was making uh, a film that was basically like a noir thriller he talks about, <laughs> which is hilarious. Oh my God. But, uh, but, uh, but they called Fergasso in because the producers were like, this isn't bloody enough. We need more violence. And so Fergasso shot this whole opening scene and, and or I'm sorry, Matei shot this whole opening scene and Fergasso hates it, even though they were oh. friends. So and they just kind of uh, married them together into one movie. Yes. Is yes. It, so there wasn't an edit from what we've seen. This is, this is the way that it opens. This is literally the way that it opens. Yeah, they, oh, okay. they start there wasn't out, a, You the, didn't the, edit this. Oh no, I did. I okay. did edit this. Yeah, okay, they, they okay. start out. There's a there's a terrible dance scene, and then one of the dancers goes upstairs because I was trying to save us a little time because yeah, the yeah, story's yeah. not no, super no. important. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying these are highlights that you've. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate. That. Yes, yes. <laughs> I didn't think you wanted to watch the terrible like solid gold dancers of <laughs> Eastern Europe uh, yeah. for the opening scene. So uh, well, yes, I just wanted to get right. I I'm all this all the sizzle and steak at the same time. Right. So I wanted to get right to the to the money Got shot it. as you will. Perfect. So, Yes, this is for the first kill. Um, yeah, he sneaks upstairs, and one of the dancers comes up. And there is your, there was your Freddy glove. Yeah, you could definitely see that. <laughs> As you can see, it's very flimsy. Yeah, it's crumpled. It's very crumpled. Blade <laughs> figures, fingers. <laughs> And and I mean I don't I don't know how this isn't part of the actual Elm Street canon at this point. Yeah, like, it should it, be. It's really claw. Uh, it's it's perfect. So, but wait, this guy is more Jason than he is Freddy, though, right? Uh, he's wearing he's, a mask. Yeah, he he's really neither, <laughs> which okay. is sort of which is sort of interesting. He uh, failed at ripping off the thing they're trying to rip off. Yeah, this and this is so typically Italian. Yeah, they they go like, I want to rip this off, but I'm going to rip it off and make it sort of different and right. terrible. So. <laughs> And uh, and this next scene, we see our first our first appearance of thirsty Freddy, who likes to make pervy phone calls when he's not stalking people in their dreams. Although he doesn't stalk anyone in their dreams here. Okay. okay. I want to kill you, you right away. First, I'm going to fuck your brain off. Listen, Mrs. Beth, lock yourself in the house. And don't open the door for anyone. <laughs> All right, pause. Okay. <laughs> So that that is your first pervy Freddy phone call. Yeah, right. right. But, but it's gonna get better. Okay. <laughs> and in this next scene, I just wanted to point out that uh, that the high production values these films had, as she calls a police officer to report the pervy prank call she has received, and you can clearly see that the uh, cord to the phone is like scotch taped to the receiver i was <laughs> i was hoping you would point that out mike <laughs> i was my eye was drawn to that yes yeah. <laughs> can i ask you though like were these made in italy and did yes. they ha- but did they oh, well, hire american actors so so how this worked was a lot of them were made in italy this one was not this one they actually came to america to make and mm. so sometimes they would come to america for certain scenes because they could like they'd get a good exchange rate on the on the lear uh, i think that's the unit of currency there and yeah. uh and so they would shoot some footage here and then they would write them off as like vacations so they would make a movie while they were on vacation this was filmed <laughs> like largely in in virginia beach i think in that area but uh a lot of times they would get actors for these films from like anywhere they would get a, they'd have an, a, a scene with a spanish actor an american actor an italian and a german and they would all be speaking their lines in their native language and then they would just dub it all later <laughs> We'll figure it out in post. <laughs> right. I like this guy's acting. I don't know where they found him, but I love yeah. him. He's he's solid. He's the star of the film, really. He, he gets one scene, but he makes the most of it. <laughs> Mrs. Beck, lock yourself in the house and don't open the door for anyone. I'll call you back in five minutes, exactly. But you said you would call me back in five minutes. I can't wait five minutes, Mrs. Beck. I'm too horny. 
He couldn't wait five minutes because he was too horny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is like my my favorite line in the movie. Uh, of all the things I never wanted to hear Freddy Krueger say, I never wanted to hear him <laughs> tell me he was too horny. <laughs> so, uh, say, just to have a killer horny. use the word horny. <laughs> right. Uh, you, you know, like th- this film is really for the people who who like – didn't want to see the adult film wet street wet dream on elm street parody right. one is right. still like a sexy elm street film without going the full distance <laughs> exactly. yes. this, this i love the poinsettia in the foreground here y- yes Just, oh. uh, this scene i will set up for you uh for a little context uh she has is accosted by another man on the road who then she follow he follows her into the hotel and she makes him take off all his clothes in the bathroom and this is what happens when he comes out of the bathroom what happened to your clothes? I got molested in a little boy's room. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on with this movie? <laughs> what in the hell do you think doing? Yes, and then this scene, he has to save her from uh, committing suicide on the beach. <laughs> Okay. I saw her drinking from a flask. Yeah, right? was, that what she was yeah. drinking from. She, she's, she's got a flask and her whole pharmacy out here on the beach because she's so despondent over over the situation in her life that the guy who just came out of the men's room has found clothes conveniently in his Jeep and now driven to the beach to find her. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and he's got the perfect solution to what? her her problem. What was that? Wait, wait. You... So wait. Can I just a question about the last one? Was that molested joke? Was that yes. su- was that supposed to be a joke or was that like a serious thing? No, that was supposed to be a joke. Okay, it was supposed <laughs> yeah, to be a joke. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like not like oh, I'm trying. I'm looking for the pool. Could you direct me to the pool at this hotel? Right. No, that was his answer. Right. Got you. She's doing some good dead weight acting here. I think. Yes. Yes. That's her whole acting style. <laughs> well, you gotta drink seawater because it throw up all that shit you've been taking. Are you crazy? Do you know the story? <laughs> All right, right. you can pause. Again. <laughs> this is un- this is incredible. Yes, <laughs> that, I mean, it does that, feel very porny too. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. really the that's really the reaction to Night Killer. Incredible. That's the one I get the most uh-huh. often. <laughs> Never so even this, heard it. Completely off the radar. Right. So in this scene, he has somehow lured this woman back to his art studio, and uh, he's into story time. Okay. <laughs> Do you know the story of Little Red Riding Hood? Sure. Ah, I get it. I'm Little Red Riding Hood and you're the big, bad wolf. Fried chicken. (laughs) What is happening in this scene? I like it already, but... Yeah, so so in this scene, uh, our, our... gentleman who has saved mrs beck uh has brought her back to his apartment because or the hotel because he's you know gonna put her on suicide watch apparently so uh and he has done decided that they're just going to do a product placement for kfc (laughs) whether kfc wants it or not so and also his tune has changed completely before he was like kicking the pills over and everything and now he's just all right kfc (laughs) and we're gonna get back to the kick of the pills in just a second all right okay good that was (laughs) Fried chicken and french fries. <laughs> Valium. <laughs> Surrender. <laughs> A gun. Barbiturates. Everything you always needed to kill yourself with, but were afraid to ask for. And pause. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, that wow. is the, that is so. Uh, it's amazing that this film didn't get like they didn't submit that to the Academy. Quotable, uh, so <laughs> quotable, right? You, this, yes, you will talk about fried chicken and French fries and barbiturates yeah. for for weeks now. Uh, uh, yes. So the funny story of this of this film is that uh, he and the lead actress hated each other. <laughs> so, oh, so uh, real yeah. moonlighting kind of situation. Yes, going on there. <laughs> they they did not get along. Okay. Uh, yes, but that some of the most famous scenes of the film right there. Just everybody Fantastic. quotes that. Fantastic fried chicken. <laughs> Everything you always needed to kill yourself with, but were afraid to ask for. She's right when she says you're a bitch in heat, Mrs. Beck. <laughs> and we're back to Thirsty Freddy. <laughs> oh, yeah, boy. Oh, but boy. now what's happening here? This isn't on the same 
killer right. here. Right. So this, of course, any good horror movie, especially a knockoff from Italy, needs a twist ending to set up a sequel, like a mm. stinger or a teaser. Mm -hmm. So in this one, Mrs. Beck's daughter is wearing the mask and setting oh. up a sequel. And somehow we never got Night Killer 2. Oh, that's a shame. All right. Let's oh. look at Mrs. Beck's daughter. <laughs> Well, you know what? In this age of streaming, they're like rebooting everything. Right. I mean, if anybody's watching, or maybe Mike, maybe the three of us should go and make Night Killer too. I've, I don't. Know. I've got a hundred bucks. If you guys, are. <laughs> yeah, that's all you need. That's We're all you need. I think yeah. I can fund the whole thing. All right, let's go let's buy a mask <laughs> and melt it. I'm back. Jump for you. Jump for you. <laughs> So she was sexually harassing her own mother there? Is that the idea? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of genuinely scary. There's a lot uh, to unpack there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, I want to wow. watch that right now. Yeah. Where, where, where can people watch it? Like, if they so, actually want to watch it, is yeah, it anywhere? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, everything I'm covering today is available on Blu ray, uh, courtesy of Severn Films. Uh, mm, okay. a small boutique label they they are uh, them and vinegar syndrome do, syndrome do a fantastic job of like going out and finding uh just weird films that were kind of lost for a long time or tied up in legal issues and bringing them out to a to a new audience uh i saw these way back in the day when you had to like trade for 18th generation bootleg tapes on vhs yeah they tape like trading somebody, days yeah, yeah. They like they'd rub vaseline on them and right. you know splice them together with duct tape and uh, yeah, so it's 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 fascinating to see something like Night Killer on Blu-ray. In Blu-ray, yeah, crystal clear. But if you want to see it, I, I also believe it's streaming on Tubi. <laughs> so, oh yeah, oh really? Yes. Oh, all right. So okay. tell us about contamination. What are we all right, watching so here? Maybe you don't want to watch another Freddy film or a slasher film or something like that. Maybe you're like, man, I would like a little sci-fi with my horror. And what better thing to do than to rip off Ridley Scott's Alien? Except. We didn't have the money to make a xenomorph and we're not going to set it in outer space because we can't afford that either. So we're going to put it in New York and call it contamination. Ooh, okay, let's watch. Like that. Again, another great t-shirt right there. Ooh, right there. Yeah, we got a whole series. Not quite and the pause. HR Geiger uh, style. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. so, so we decided since we couldn't build xenomorphs, we would just use the booger looking eggs that explode acid on everybody <laughs> right, right. Uh, instead. So this is sort of like an interesting scene because we get like a twofer in the knockoff department here. We've got the, the exploding acid filled eggs of Alien and we've got the guys in the white suits, which is kind of like George Romero's The Crazies at the same time. Yes, that's yeah, totally that's the, yeah, that's the yeah, crazies. I can so, see so, that. So Luigi Kotze, who directed this film, uh, was was actually a talented director who just really never got the money to make the kind of films he was capable of making. Uh, and so this one is better than Night Killer, but it also has a ton of problems. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have all decontamination procedures been completed? Another five minutes, ma'am. Colonel, he's undergone all the necessary preliminaries. And that, that looked dubbed. So yes, that is definitely dubbed, and uh, my, this is highlights one of my favorite things about the film is that it basically looks like they reused the Turkish Star Wars sets uh, oh, for, yeah. for this yeah. scene. <laughs> like the lighted wall panel is absolutely not real at all. So, and <laughs> I I really like that Stella, our lead actress, who is going to save the world, she's going to do it with the help of like budget John Holmes here. So or like Alex Trebek. Kind <laughs> Alex of like. Trebek. That's what yes. I was thinking there. Yes. Yeah. 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 You got you got a lot of ways you. Can could go with that guy right so and then in the next scene we're going to meet our hero joe did you have something there i did have a question i can't remember oh why do they always dub them like why yeah. is it do you know so why it was it? yeah it was it was because uh like as i i mentioned earlier that a lot of the times they had actors who didn't speak english or spoke like four different languages oh, in a so scene the accents so all the nobody same. nobody could understand anybody and they were talking in four different languages so they would save money and they would just shoot them without sound and then dub everything in post and there's actually an uh, a couple of uh men uh ted rusov and edward mannix who you will hear 
in almost every one of these movies is different characters. As the like they, yeah, yeah, they did a ton of dubbing. And uh, so you will learn to like, if you watch enough Italian genre cinema from the 80s, you will learn to pick out Edward Mannix and Ted Russoff <laughs> in every time they're in a movie. Interesting. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the ringers. Gone all the necessary preliminaries. And pause. <laughs> a good scene. As you can see, that's our hero, Ian McCulloch, who, uh, who is uh, obviously in great shape to save the world, right? From an alien uh-huh. invasion. He's, right. uh, he's just basically here drowning his sorrows because they didn't cast him as James Bond. If only somebody could <laughs> kick those beer cans over and tell him not to have all the recipes to kill himself. What was the line there? Yeah. Everything you want to know. <laughs> Everything to you ever needed yeah. to kill yourself. Yes. He just needs some barbiturates. Yeah. <laughs> and some fried chicken. Right. We went into the cave and it was dark and strangely humid and it was there we saw the eggs. God, there were so many. They were green, just like the one in your photograph. And then from the back of the cave, we heard a noise it's kind of like a colonoscopy or something it's a, <laughs> yes a bit of a <laughs> he's he really needed to get drunk because he was going to wander into a roger dean album cover <laughs> yeah <laughs> so was it looks like a great matte, matte painting something though it's got to be hanging ominous. somewhere and it yes. radiated a light as it moved towards us it, it it was slowly filling the cave with with this blind i mean i'll give him credit that's not a terrible set light. piece there Oh. Yeah, so this is yeah this is one of the things i love uh, like the the beauty of this is like they obviously don't have the budget to create this set so they kind of do this matte painting and then they put them in front of it and they make these eggs and then the other thing that happens in the scene that's sort of cool is the soundtrack is from goblin who scored suspiria and yes. a ton of like classic italian horror films awesome and music. dawn of the yeah. dead so the music the prog rock music of goblin and, and this era is just amazing and makes these films like a million times better than they would be without it. And like, even if you watch them and you laugh at them, the music is generally pretty good. Exactly. And I, and I realized that all of, all of Goblin's music, well, not all of it, but like a lot of it is on Spotify. And I've yes. Been, yes, I've been listening to it all month. Good yeah. Halloween soundtrack. It Blind, is. Perfect. Hypnotic light. Hundreds more are being picked right now. Everything will be ready in a few days. Then the eggs will be shipped, sent around the whole world. And there won't be any mistakes this time. And pause there is so that's just a, a little story interlude there that the 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 catch of contamination is that they're breeding these eggs to spread them around the world to apparently spread this alien invasion and they're doing it in coffee <laughs> like <laughs> this is a coffee plant and so apparently Folgers is going to be responsible oh for the i world. see all right that's an interesting <laughs> wrinkle okay that's, right. that's like the fertilizer for the alien eggs yes oh. <laughs> Folgers crystals okay and, uh, <laughs> and and so in the next scene uh we're coming to the end of of contamination and i told you there were no xenomorphs in this film but i lied oh uh, i lied you yes. did here we go <laughs> There we go. Not quite striking fear the way the alien queen did. It's basically Kang and Kodos from The Simpsons. Yeah, yes. (laughs) Foolish Earthlings. That's that's it. Put a glass dome over him. And... Oh yeah. <laughs> One eye. And twist it. Oh. There's one. There's one egg. Oh. Uh, yep. Oh. Calling your shot. Twist yeah. editing. Always now, gotta have get a, one. Did we get a, a sequel out of that? Because that uh, sets no. it up first. No, we did. Look no. who gets right. first billing and the credits too. Sound effects. Yeah. And... Sound effects. Oh. Right. <laughs> I guess they ended with the sound effect there. So. Yeah. So, yeah. so no, we did not we did not get a, a contamination two, but there is an alien two uh, that's even worse. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, and funnily enough, I'm actually working on a new video for another uh, Matei and Fragasso film called Shocking Dark, which is rips off both Aliens and Terminator. 
So, Ooh, good combo. and it's not nearly as good as it should be, but <laughs> it tries. <laughs> Interesting. So. All right. Now, the uh, title of this one is, I mean, it reminds me of Steve Martin's book, Cruel Shoes, Cruel yeah. Jaws. <laughs> um, yes. And again, another great t shirt. Yes. This, I mean, just like, yeah, the fronts front, are fantastic. Print them out tonight. This is the most amazing example of Italian ripoff in history, I think. Um, Cruel Jaws finds Bruno Mattei. Basically, uh, if you found yourself sitting around going, I want to watch all the Jaws movies, but I don't have like eight hours to kill. I'd like to see it in 90 minutes. Uh, Cruel Jaws is it. And I don't mean he just like made a shark movie that's like the four Jaws movies. I mean, he made a shark movie that literally takes footage from all four Jaws movies and <laughs> splices it into his movie. No way. <laughs> it's a yes. mashup. It's Whoa. a mashup okay. and it's amazing. Did he You're get love it. sued or anything for this? Uh, or no, like... he, he got, he got around this because they, they didn't release it in America, um, okay. which is interesting because uh, Enzo Castellari made great white, AKA the last shark that universal sued and won against for being too much like jaws. And it was like jaws, but this is jaws because it actually has <laughs> scenes from jaws in it uh like there are a whole and when they don't necessarily when they don't just steal a scene they recreate it with like dialogue that is word for word from the jaws movie unbelievable cruel uh, yes. jaws cruel right. jaws so even crueler than the real jaws even crueler <laughs> you know folks around here are waiting for the season to open if word gets out that a shark tore a driver to bits Hey, you can kiss the tourist season. Is <laughs> it the exact same? It's the exact scene. It's the exact scene. scene. <laughs> but and with no like different. But costumes from Halloween Adventure, you know, right. like the cop and the, and the ascot. <laughs> There are literally a dozen scenes exactly like this that you will go, where have I heard that before? Where uh -huh. have I heard these lines? Oh, that wait, same. Jaws 2. <laughs> I like the framing of this shot right here. Yes. Everything's uh, kind of bunched over on the left. All, yeah, all to the left, yes. <laughs> and we've got, like, the officer who looks like Patrick Duffy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and here's... I, this, this is Star Wars. They're the fanfare yeah. for Star Wars, right? Yes. That, you right? you are probably expecting some John Williams music in a Jaws ripoff, yeah. just not this particular track. <laughs> this is a Slightly changes there. <laughs> this changes enough, I guess. Yes. <laughs> like, how ballsy do you have to be to steal that music? <laughs> like, yeah. They're Bruno just Mattei like, just did not care. They're just saying fuck it to this whole thing. Just the like, whole thing. Who cares? This, this, <laughs> next, <laughs> this next scene is going to be worthy of a pause, but yeah. let's just play it first yeah. here. Yes. Killing this shark isn't going to be easy. He's a treacherous mother. It's not like fishing for sardines. We're dealing with a man eater here. If he gets his teeth into you and clamps down with his jaws, you've had it. <laughs> okay, so first of all, this guy is like. <laughs> We Hulk Hogan, right? He, he, he's Hulk Hogan off cycle. I right. thought it was. I honestly thought it was Hulk Hogan. Like at first, I was like, "Oh, it's a look like." Then I was like, "Oh wait, is it actually him?" <laughs> but I also like that they included. Well, this diagram's awful, but yes. anal, anal fin, anal fin. <laughs> class first, male only. <laughs> Anal I didn't fan. get there. I was trying to read all the other ones. Yeah, I like that, like the eyebrow above the yeah. eye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just looks like a... <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's an educational film. You will not only learn, you will not only have a good time. You will learn shark anatomy by the time Cool Jaws is over. So he's the shark expert. He, he is not. He's, no. he's, he he owns a a Sea World esque park that's on the verge of bankruptcy, and uh, and basically. Uh, the guy sitting here on the ledge uh, on the on the counter there is like young Matt Damon is supposed to be like the Hooper character Got who's it. actually the expert, but Hulk Hogan, budget Hulk Hogan is here to to okay. help. So. Okay. And, and and are there hard shadows helping too? Like are they? Yeah, <laughs> yes, they, <laughs> they really shadows. They really wanted they really wanted to make sure the scene was lit. Uh -huh. <laughs> so. Let's see everybody, I'll give them that. <laughs> and, and so I, I I'll set up the next scene because yeah, it's yeah, really special. This scene is like 15 seconds long and it manages to cram in both stolen footage from Jaws and Jaws 2 in a mere 15 seconds. Wow. Okay, here we go. These guys are good. <laughs> I, 
I enjoy the fact that the the footage that they stole uh, is not even good quality footage. It's like they went on YouTube and found like a 240p <laughs> print of Jaws 2 yeah. and just got like video <laughs> downloader. Scaled it up. <laughs> it's dark. <laughs> hell was that <laughs> and then uh you know the the catch of cruel jaws is that you know they they didn't have the budget for a shark so they use a lot of uh stolen footage and stock footage of sharks and footage of uh, monster sharks from other movies but they did spend money on this <laughs> so this is their original footage here okay uh, yeah, I, actually, I'm not 100% positive. <laughs> it, it, gets, it gets really complicated to trace where all the footage in this yeah. movie came from because they're also ripping off other Italian Jaws ripoffs. This is like a collage. Yeah! This is a collage. They did it. <laughs> I like this celebration scene. <laughs> they saw under the water. <laughs> <Yeah>! <laughs> And they blew it up we without it, blowing brother. themselves up. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like there's still a Jaws there, or the movie's starting over. Yeah, right. Like, why was he still there at the end? <laughs> the ending? Oh, Point of view. So oh my good. God. So like, this good. is incredible. Italian horror knockoffs. Yes. Um, Thank you. Wow. That's just the tip of the iceberg, too, right? Tip of the iceberg. I think I want to see what was the first one? Night Freak? N- Night Killer. Night, Night Killer. Killer. Yeah, yes. yeah. I want to yeah. see. I, I, I think I'm going to start there. Yeah. I All think three of these be... are available on Blu ray, on uh, streaming. I think you can see all three on Tubi. So, okay. Oh, man. All right. This has been an education. <laughs> and, uh, Mike, so you have a Patreon, too, for your channel, I like, do. like we do. So we will put that up send folks over to there to support this fine work because uh, these, these are things that i feel like would be lost you know to history otherwise yes i'm i'm happy to shine a light on them anytime you need me so oh all right. definitely <laughs> all right definitely. mike thanks so all much right. we'll see you again uh, hopefully at a non-october time yes definitely <laughs> happy Thank halloween you. happy halloween to you guys when we return dr selner will complete the bunion surgery Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing. All right, I gotta go. That's all. That's it. Let me see that one. Rocks are done. Gotta sleep. Bye. That's it. That had it done. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? In eight. My not is for yuck anymore. Ooh. That's all I'm doing. Triodal. Tinkerbell. We'll be right back right after that. And Kurt Polster, the real great guy. Night, night. Goodbye. Gems, coins, in Hilda.